guys <clears throat> it's been a while since I uh, did this last time it's two years I think um, I can see that I have uh, five viewers right now so if any of you would just like to write in the chat if you can hear me that would be awesome and then we can get going greetings from Norway <laughs> I'll just assume that you know that I'm Norwegian. So if you guys have any questions, anything you would like to know about the stuff that I do, now is the time to ask. Alexandra and yeah Christian Christian I'm uh, from uh, Ogeland currently living in uh, Stavall if you guys have any questions about the, or any comments about the video quality stream quality Anything you would like me to change, then uh, go ahead, just let me know. What's your favorite guitar? If you guys hold on one minute, I'm going to go find my favorite guitar. Hang on. This is uh, my favorite guitar. It's an uh, Ibanez 550 limited edition. As you can see, it got it's got these fancy swirly colors, and uh, it's uh, it's really just incredible to play. So I can let me just fire up my Actifex. Still in tune. Pickup switch. It's uh, it's got some bad connections, so I just have to rock it a few times, and then it's. Let me know if the volume is too high, or too low, too loud, or too quiet. 
This is the one I recorded most of my uh, E minor backing tracks with. <laughs> my favorite guitar ever right now it's uh, it's gotten out of intonation I'll have to reset all the intonation screws and they rusted and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to uh, move those screws again so it's uh, right now for recording solos and stuff it's it's not ideal but it's still it's the best playing guitar that I've ever had I bought it for ridiculously cheap uh, for Norwegian prices. I gave 3,000 kroners for this guitar, and I got this an amp and a few cables and a case and everything. And this guitar is worth a lot more than that. <laughs> no, sorry, it's bro. I uh, cannot play through the fire and flames. I'm not the I'm not really that much of a shredder and the last years in in the last years I've just mostly been playing rhythm writing music practicing shredding hasn't been my priority for like three years now I think it's kind of a thing that you grow out of eventually if you're not super talented extremely good you know I see we got 11 viewers that's good. Um, uh, Bruno, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's about the manliest guitar they have, and uh, nothing's like a guitar that makes sure that you're comfortable comfortable with your own sexuality. It's uh. Yeah, it's just so awesome. It's a great nick. Haven't been playing it that much lately because of the intonation issues. But it's still great to just uh, bring up sometimes and uh, yeah. What do you know about theory, harmonies and other stuff like that for making your music? Well that's a good question and to be honest I was hoping for that question to come up. Um, a few years ago, I used to work as a guitar teacher. I I was teaching guitar for five years, I think. And um, music theory is this strange kind of thing that you really should learn, but then again, you really shouldn't, because the moment that you start to learn theory, that's the moment when you start to put your playing into boxes and shapes and all this stuff that's just gonna mess with your creativity you know it's not going to be that easy to make new stuff once you're just learning music theory because uh, it's so it's so huge there's so much to learn uh, you'll never learn everything and it's um, yeah in order to learn enough theory to actually make interesting music that's going to take you a lot of years and a lot of practice and practicing music theory is really boring um, so yeah, what was the question again? What do you know about theory? Well, I know, like, I know most of the notes on the fretboard. Um, I'm not that good at uh, uh, finding them as I used to be, uh, but I know which chords work together, and uh, I know that if I'm in E minor, then there are certain chords that 
are going to work in E minor and certain notes that are going to work. Uh, other than that, I don't really think about theory anymore while I'm playing. Um, I've just gotten to the stage where learning theory simply got too boring and I was just starting to play new stuff. But I usually use theory in order to create what I want to hear. Sometimes I just want to play some uh, something um, that I know works. Like if you check out my um, How to Impress the Girls with the Guitar video, that's the kind of song where I just used really simple theory and um, and just made something that works. And it's not it's not interesting music, but it works. But other than that, all my best ideas come from simply playing. I'll just sit down with the guitar and I'll play something, and subconsciously I'll I'll make it fit into some sort of key or mode, and um, I'll just work from there. I don't really think about the theory while I'm playing anymore. <laughs> um, Infinity. Hey, when can we expect any results from the contest? Uh, I received a lot of uh, great contributions to the vocal contest. It's really incredible to hear all the people that have been recording vocals and even making music videos. I was totally not expecting that. Um, I don't know when I'm gonna... Um, I should probably announce a winner soon. Um, but I haven't, in fact this I haven't really decided yet. It's, uh, there's a, a few people competing for the first place and I might even use several vocalists, I don't know. Um, and I'm also going away tomorrow and I'm gonna be away for three weeks. Not really gonna do much YouTubing then, so it's gonna take a little while, sorry about that. Uh... Would you say music theory restricts you as a player? Definitely not. Uh, having some theory as kind of a, a ground wall, you know, uh, a base layer of knowledge is uh, is going to help you massively. But just make sure that you're not only thinking about theory when you're playing. If something sounds sounds good and it doesn't seem correct according to theory, then just screw the theory, you know, just uh, do what sounds good. And if you're writing this whole song and you have no idea how how the theory works, uh, never mind. If it sounds good, it sounds good. That's the most important thing you can learn. Um, Brendan Schultz, can you sweep pick? If so, can you show us an arpeggio? Yeah, sure. Uh, sweep picking? Something I haven't really done for years, uh, but I used to do it, and I learned, of course, all the usual. Uh, all the usual arpeggios, the minor and major arpeggios. Um, this one, this minor arpeggio, is like uh, you start on the 12th fret on the A string, and you hammer onto the 15th. And then just sweep along to the 14th fret on the D string, 14th fret on the G string, 13th fret on the B string, 12th fret on the E string, and just hammer on and pull off on the uh, 17th fret. And then just go the same way back down. So. And I'm suffering a bit from the uh, first and last note syndrome. And, you know, you can hear the first note, and then it mostly just... But that's simply because I haven't been sweeping seriously for f four or five years. Uh, it's the kind of technique that you learn, and you do it a lot, and then you realize that it just sounds weird. Um, there's not really that much use for it. Uh, and then I just stopped doing it really. Uh, wasn't getting anywhere. Um, yeah, about the contest uh, in three weeks, I think I'm gonna have the results for the winner. I think I'm gonna spend some time listening to the contributions again while I'm uh, gone. 
Brandon Schultz. Minor equals metal. That's true. Um, Mattia, Mattia, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, what are your daily exercises with guitar? My real problem is that I don't know how to use scales when I play. Um, I can show you basically uh, when it comes to my daily exercise. Right now I'm at school, I'm super busy, I don't actually have time to play daily. I, the only playing I do these days is when I'm producing, making backing tracks original songs, so I just play whenever I have the time to play, a few times a week. Um, but I can show you how, how to play scales when you when you play guitar, it's, it's really extremely simple. If you take the uh, E minor scale, let's say you have an E minor backing track, which there's a lot of on my channel. You have these notes. That's one octave of the E minor scale. Um, you can Google E minor guitar scale and you can find these maps of the whole fretboard, all the notes that are in E minor. And when you're in, a, in, in an uh, E minor backing track, something that's, that's like... Like that, maybe. Um, what you're going to do is you're, you're just going to use notes from that scale, from these. And then you can just do whatever you want, you can... Hang on one second, just gotta answer this uh, one text. Let me see. Oh, there's a lot of questions coming in. Um, how do I play rhythm and lead at the same time? Um, well, basically, it's uh, something you usually do while finger picking. You can do it while using a pick, but it's it's going to be a lot more complicated since you have to mute the strings uh, while you're playing. You mute some of the strings that you're not using, and so on. Um, and um, uh, one second again, guys. I just gotta fix some stuff here. I'll catch up with you. Playing rhythm and lead at the same time is is something that took me a while to learn how to do. But my tips to you is. Um, learn how to classical guitar pieces because then you're going to be, be playing lead and rhythm at the same time and you're gonna make this uh, kind of parallel approach to playing uh, Infinity would like lead tips uh, my lead tips is something that I'm probably gonna make a video about sometime it's, um, it's I'm gonna call the video play guitar like you mean it because uh, through my five years of teaching guitar I had a lot of students that seemed to be kind of shy about their playing um, if I asked them to play something like uh, like that um, they would be really shy and not even always turn up the volume and they, they would play like Just be really quiet and sh just make it sound like they're embarrassed of their own playing. And that's basically the worst thing you can do while playing. Uh, the best thing you can do is use some heavy pick attacks. Uh, use some heavy vibrato, like heavy pick attacks. That's a really good vibrato. And uh, and just, just make it seem like you're enjoying what you're doing and that you're not embarrassed to show the world how you're playing. So just uh, instead of instead of that, just and it's gonna sound so much better. There is a danger that you're gonna make more uh, mistakes, but whatever. Uh, as long as you make it seem like you're confident about your playing, making mistakes isn't really that much of a problem.
Uh, wanna do a time squealy and light up the something then ah uh, the place, eh? Uh, <laughs> I don't really I don't really do time squealies. I haven't even mounted my uh whammy bar to this uh guitar. But um no time squealies isn't something that I've actually ever done. Uh let me see. Just one second. David, don't walk on it. How do you record, David? Uh, how do you record music? I uh, let me just see if there's some earlier questions. Um, do you know any anything about how to recover from tendonitis? Yeah, I do. I have had tendonitis myself, and um, what you basically have to do um, is two things or several things actually, you have to make sure that you're not doing what causes the pain. Uh, when I started out playing I played a lot of Slayer songs and of course they gave me tendonitis in my right hand because of all the tremolo picking. Um, what I basically had to do is just tone down the playing a little bit. Uh, the second it starts to hurt that's when you have to stop playing and do other things, do uh, weightlifting do training, go for a run, um, do something else than playing guitar and sitting with your computer. Just avoid everything that causes pain and do everything else. And uh, realize that there's, all, uh, there's always something else to do in life other than playing guitar. And eventually the tendonitis is going to go away. And uh, when it has gone away you have to kind of focus on the technique that you're not um, you're not tensing up your muscles while you're playing, you have to be relaxed and you will notice that if you are able to stay relaxed while playing then you will not have a problem with tendonitis ever again. If you just ignore the pain and just keep playing you might get chronic tendonitis and it's gonna follow you your whole life and that's not something you want. Let's see... How do you record your music? Um, what you uh, or what I do is um, I use Reaper. Uh, my guitar is plugged into my XFX, which uh, sits comfortably under my table. It's going into an external audio interface, um, and it's going straight into Reaper. In Reaper, I'm programming some drums uh, with uh, Easy Drummer 2.0. And uh, that's basically how I record my music. I also have a bass guitar that I use to record bass on my recordings. Let me know if you have any s specific uh, comments about uh, or questions about the recording. Uh, let me see. How do you links to together, uh, link riffs together effectively? I can write riffs fairly competently, but linking them together to make a song is challenging. Any tips? Um, well, um, that was actually something that I, um, I I used to wonder about the same thing before I started making my own music effectively and yeah, making uh, the song sound like a song and not just a bunch of riffs. Um, first thing, of course, if you have two riffs, uh, they have to be the same tempo. They have to have kind of the same feel. If you're um, if you're linking together two riffs that just sound so completely different uh, that they shouldn't even be in the same song, then it's never going to sound like uh, the same song. But the the key is here to remember that the guitar isn't everything. Uh, the best tool you have to link your riffs together is actually your drums. If you program a proper drum fill at the end of a riff, that kind of sets the mood to introduce a new riff. And that's really what it's all about. The drums can do a fill, the bass can do a small bass line, create some tension, and um, if you try that you'll find that a lot of riffs fit together even though uh, it, it can sounds like it can sound like um, 
the transition isn't really there, but when once you get the drums, you know, once the drummer kicks in, it's all gonna sound good. Can you explain how to use the minor modes? Uh, forget about the word modes. It's uh, just more confusing than uh, than you're ever gonna <laughs> achieve anything from it. Um, just uh, if you Google or find some uh, a fretboard map of the Aeolian mode, um, just treat that as a scale. And if you can find a fretboard map of the Phrygian mode, just three, uh, just treat that one as a separate scale. Don't try to link it up with the Aeolian mode because that's just going to confuse you. Just treat the modes as completely different scales and just try to forget about the modes. It seems to me like people look at the modes and say like, oh, they're the key to excellent improvisation and there's supposed to be some super secret thing about modes that's gonna make you sound like a guitar god. But it's, um, that's truly not the way it is. Can you show us some less common or typical sweep or arpeggio shapes? Sorry, I haven't been sweeping for years. Um, so what you're going to have to do is you're going to just have to Google uh, less common or typical sweep or arpeggio shapes. I'm sorry about that. Um, when on acoustic, um, like those modern acoustic players like Antoine Dufour and the Key, have you experimented with those styles tunings, for instance? Open D, then that get tuning. I think that's Open D, right? Um, yeah, I have been ex experimenting uh, with some uh, with some. Uh, alternate tunings a couple of times, but I don't really ever <laughs> find myself doing other things than just messing around with them, not really creating anything. Uh, right now I, I'm more than busy enough with uh, the standard uh, tunings. But I've been experimenting a little bit with uh, some, um, some uh, percussive playing on acoustic. I'm not good enough that I'm gonna <laughs> show it right now, but it's uh, it's something new and challenging when you kind of feel like you're uh, you've gotten on the level that you want on the electric guitar. Um, I would like to remember uh, recommend uh, a fellow guitar player called Tobias Rauscher. He's on YouTube. Uh, he's got a few um, excellent percussive guitar songs and. He also uh, sells the tabs for them, which is extremely helpful. <laughs> Minor Drummer 666, are you kidding me? No wonder your music sounds bland. Modes are beyond important. Yeah, sure, if you're the kind of guy who wants to make that kind of music, then... Um, I'm sure that's that's fine for you, but I'm um, about making bland music. I think that's actually um, a qu quite interesting topic because uh, when I used when I started out playing guitar, I was all into playing progressive, weird sounding stuff, uh, super heavy, technical death metal um, music that I like to call music for musicians. Um, but right now, when I'm uh, making my backing tracks and my original songs, I'm not really trying to do anything fancy. I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm making bland music on purpose, because that's what sounds good to me right now. I'm not really interested in uh, making something super fancy. If I was, then I would be making jazz. But I don't like jazz. What drumming programs do you use? I use Easy Drummer 2.0. It's the new Easy Drummer. The old Easy Drummer was not really that good, and I used Superior Drummer for a long time. Um, but now I use Easy Drummer 2.0. It sounds so good out of the box. Uh, you don't have to tweak that much, even though I uh, tweak a little bit. Um, let's see. Uh, 
but yeah, Easy Drummer 2.0. Uh, a lot of people kind of seem to think that Easy Drummer is something bad, um, but it's uh, it, it's gotten so good. Um, it's I've never had anyone who doesn't play drums come up to me and tell me that my drums don't sound like real drums. So. I want to record a cover of a song. I can't find the backing track for it. Is there any way to easily remove guitar parts from songs? No. <laughs> That's the simple answer. Uh, removing vocals is one thing. If the vocal is centered on the track, then you can cancel it out by doing some simple stuff uh, like the karaoke programs do. But recording the guitars, that's just not gonna happen. Um, what you're gonna have to do is you um, could try finding uh, a Guitar Pro tab and muting the guitars and play from there. That's one option. The other option is to just you know program your own uh, drums in uh, Easy Drummer, but that's really time consuming. <laughs> Tips on writing metal riffs. I find it harder to write riffs that sound good than to write solos that sound good. By the way, if you guys can hear some noise, it's my roommates running around screaming strange stuff. Um, writing metal riffs. Well, I don't really know what kind of unlocked it for me, but I am. Um, I've been writing riffs uh, ever since uh, after a few months of playing guitar, but my riffs uh, in the in the beginning just mostly sucked. Uh, but I've I've basically been writing thousands of riffs and uh, yeah, like I said before, don't try, don't necessarily try to reinvent the wheel, you know. Just um, think that keep it simple. Keeping it simple is usually the best thing. And um, once the drummer kicks in, you can make almost any riff sound good. So don't try to overdo yourself. Just do some simple stuff. Um, you can always try to like um, listen to a song, take like Master of Puppets, and just try to rearrange some of the notes, kind of make it your own. That's that's a good way to learn how to make new riffs, and then maybe rearrange that one again and then you have something that really uh, sounds good let's see yeah good tips from uh, Mattia Exporting the Guitar Pro tabs in MIDI, replacing the MIDI tracks in the DAW, so you have a pretty good backing track. That's true. Um, I think a lot of people have that technique. Any suggestions for a bass plugin? I was wondering if I could just program the bass in Guitar Pro and transfer it to Reaper. As a MIDI and use a plugin. Never done that before. Yeah, it's um, it's totally possible, and most of the time, it's totally not gonna sound perfect. But it can um, it can work. Uh, like uh, this guy is uh, saying here, uh, guitar rig amplitude. You can also Google free VST guitar. That's also gonna. Uh, that's also gonna work, but it's just be aware that it's not really going to sound amazing. Um, but it could work, yeah. Yeah, as you can see, how Infinity does it. 
do you ever think about using synth pads or orchestral music instruments? I actually used synth in a couple of songs. If you can, if you listen to Departure, um, and um, there's one more. I can't remember the name. Um, let me see. I've got this somewhere. Let's see. Original songs. Um, there should be since in the uprising. My original song, the uprising, has some synths. I used reason for the synths, and um, it's not never really been my thing, but it certainly has potential. Uh, I would probably need someone else who's better with synths and more used to the idea of using it in their music than what I am. That's true what Infinity is saying, uh, using um, MIDI bass sounds good enough for guitar, for a backing track. Backing tracks don't have to have good quality. Um, what basses do you use? Just curious. I use um, an Ibanez bass, uh, four string, tuned it down. Uh, it's um, it's uh, in the bag under the bed right now. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna pull it out right now. But it's uh, it's a four string Ibanez uh, cheap bass that I tuned down to B, um, and it sounds pretty. Pretty good. Uh, I had this Yamaha RBX three seven five. Um, yeah, I actually made a shootout video uh, comparing those two bases, and um, you can check that out if you want to see the difference. Um, but it's uh, it, it's an okay base. Uh, the Yamaha didn't sound as good. It had really low output pickups and uh, was really noisy, but the Ibanez sounds uh, a lot better. And it feels better too, and using a 5-string five five bass uh, never really made any sense to me, so I just went for a 4-string with the same scale length. What pickups do you use? Um, I use, um, let me see, in this guitar there's Dimarcio Evolutions in the bridge and the neck. In my primary 7 string guitar, I have this um, um, DiMarzio, I think, X2N7 in the bridge. Um, and the stock pickup in the neck. And on my black guitar, which I uh, black RG321, which I use for drop D songs, I have. Um, a uh, EMG 81 in the bridge and a Dragonfire 85 that's an EMG 85 clone in the neck. The Dragonfire pickup sounds just as good as an EMG, no difference. Oh, of course there's probably a difference but it sounds just as good. Uh, what do you string your 5 string with? I, um, as I said I, I just use uh, 4 string bass now. Uh, and I'm using a, I think I'm using a five string bass set, just uh, throwing away the lightest string. And it's, uh, I've always been using Diodario strings for everything. Uh, I've always struggled with making my own drum tracks, so I've used yours a lot. Thanks. So, what software do you use to program your drums? Uh, I use the DIW, I use is uh, Reaper and uh, the drum program they use is Easy Drummer 2.0, and I just program the drums straight into um, straight into the MIDI editor of Reaper. And you can check out my making a simple drum beats tutorial. It's on my YouTube channel uh, where I show how to, how I program my uh, drums. Ben Carter, I've heard bare knuckles are good. Yeah, I've also heard they're good. I've never had my hands on bare knuckle pickups. My experience though is that pickups, as long as you have decent pickups, you can get amazing tones from uh, your amp. Especially if you have an amp simulator like an XFX, you have so much that you can tweak that you can pretty much make your tone sound good no matter what kind of pickups you have, basically.
And another recommendation, this is not because I'm getting free picks. Um, this is um, a Dragon's Heart guitar pick. It's uh, This is the original variant. It's um, hands down the best guitar picks I've ever used. If you can see it has this pointy egg edge, a round edge, and a kind of blunt edge. Um, I always use the pointy edge. I've always been a fan of pointy hard picks. It's three millimeters, I think, but it's kind of tapered off at the end. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it took me, honestly, it took me a few days to become used to them. But now I wouldn't ever play anything else. I used to use this Dunlop uh, 73 or 76 uh, Dunlop Ultex picks. They're, they play great. The only problem is that when they're brand new, they are really sharp and kind of have a lot of drag on the strings. This one glides over the strings a lot better. And these are basically indestructible. I've, I have a box full of these picks. Um, but even after several hours, yeah, here's this is what I used to play with. I made some lines in it to to improve the grip. Um, but these basically get ruined after a few hours of hard playing, while the Dragon's Heart guitar picks, all my picks look brand look brand new. Um, Bailey, yeah, the Dragon's Heart guitar pick is kind of multiple picks in one pick. Um, I have a few different ones here, um, and um, I also have, let's see here, some exclusive new stuff, I don't think, I don't think uh, Dragon's Heart have um, published their new picks yet, but as I showed you, this is the original, this is kind of the pure, I think it's called. It's the softest one of them. It's, it doesn't feel soft, but it, it plays a little softer, has a little softer attack, and this is the hardened one. This one is really hard. Um, but, Dragon's Heart Guitar Picks is also coming up with this kind of standard, I think, uh, 0.7 picks. Um, and they're uh, shaped in these fancy um, shapes. Also this one. It's kind of almost like a triangle pick. Uh, it also has a round edge, a sharp edge, and an even sharper edge. Uh, it's also a thin 0.7 something. One that's just a little bigger. And uh, one that's uh, also the heart shape, but smaller and really thin. Uh, I still love the original ones the most, but I remember when I, when I was getting used to Dragon's Heart guitar picks, I was thinking that it would be perfect if they made this kind of thin heart shaped pick. And now they're making it. I don't know if he's published them yet, but they're coming. Um, are those Dragon Hearts good for rhythm downstrokes? Yeah, they're basically good for everything. It feels really different playing them. As I said, it takes it's gonna take you days or even weeks or months to become used to them. But once you get used to them, uh, you're not gonna leave it behind. It's uh, yeah, it's it's just gonna be a whole other world of picks. Uh, I can't do harmonics with thick picks. Yeah, it's it's a bit more challenging, but it's really just about getting used to it. Yeah, they remind of these uh, shark fin uh, picks, but the shark fin picks are just useless in my opinion. Uh, they just look cool. The Dragon's Heart guitar picks are actually uh, actually functional. They don't just look fancy. They the design is really well thought out. And uh, I was thinking uh, I'm probably gonna make a review of this new Dragon's Heart pick shapes soon. Um, when I have the time.
So if you guys have any more questions, just uh, let me know. I'll see if I've missed some questions here. For how long are you playing? Um, I started out when I was 15. In a couple of months, I'll be 25. Uh, getting old, so uh, I'll uh, be playing for all 10 years now. I never thought this day would come. Uh, but basically, I've, I've been playing for almost 10 years, but technically, like my skill set, um, if you go three years back in time, I, I was more proficient with like sweeping, tapping, shredding, etc. But now I'm a lot better musician, I write better music, and so on. Um, any advice on writing rhythm or melody first? Write whatever f floats your boat, man. Um, I do both. Some days I get this awesome melody in my head and I just have to write down some melodies. Uh, other times I suddenly come up with this great rhythm riff. Um, but there's this one thing that Dave Wiener, uh, Steve Weiss, second guitarist, I took some lessons with him a few years ago. He told me that um, once you just write a chorus or a melody, um, the rest of the song tends to write itself. And I, I've experienced that a few times. If uh, if I write a melody first, put some chords under it, listen to what I've made, then it's a lot easier to hear what's supposed to come afterwards. Whereas if I write a riff, just uh, rhythms first, then um, often I, I'll just end up writing one, one riff and not knowing where I'm supposed to go after that. What I do then is just archive that riff and uh, pull it out later for uh, other songs. Uh, do you have any tips on playing live shows? Yeah, sure. Um, it goes under what I s said a few minutes ago about uh, playing guitar like you mean it. You really have to give everything when you're playing live. You have to Put your feet out wide, uh, come up to the front of the stage, look the audience in the eyes, be relaxed, uh, don't be, don't look like uh, a statue playing the guitar, don't think that people are going to care about how you're playing. Um, my experience is that people, as long as you're playing the correct song, <laughs> people uh, are not going to think about uh, your mistakes while you play or anything, so there's really no point of being nervous, nervous when you're playing live. I played a lot of live shows, and it, it gets in in the beginning. It's of course you're going to be nervous, and uh, uh, it's maybe not going to be that much fun. But when you get comfortable playing live, it's it's just a blast every time. It's uh, it's incredibly fun. It's an adrenaline rush, and uh, yeah, it's it's one of the best things you can do, really. So, just don't think that anyone cares about how you play, and if you make a mistake, pretend you like you didn't make it at all, or just smile or do anything. Don't ever look like you're being ashamed of what you're playing, or kind of give up if you're making a mistake. Just move on. Nobody cares. Hopefully, the audience is drunk. Sometimes I'll just play some chords or if hit record and then let the DAW record while I improvise. Then I write bass and drums and result a complete song. Ha ah, yeah. That's uh <laughs> that's also my thing. Um guitar height for live playing. This is the height that I have my guitar. It's pretty high. Um but as long as you're not just standing upright with your feet together and and playing like this. As long as you're relaxed, um, making sure that you look like you're enjoying yourself, you can have your guitar up under your neck and uh, nobody would care. You basically just have to look like you're, uh, you're confident and comfortable about what you're doing. So having your guitar down on your knees is just going to hinder your playing, give your tendonitis and uh, make you sound like crap.
unless you play deathcore or gent, of course. If you just <laughs> use one string, you don't really have to think about that. Alright guys, I'm gonna stay on for about 5 more minutes and uh, then I have to go. So if you guys have any more questions, let me know now. southwest part of Norway. Now I live in the uh, east slash southeast part. What do you think about multi-effect pedals? I haven't used them for like eight years. I used to have some multi-effect pedals uh, when I started out playing and some of them sounded okay but they're not really useful for anything. Uh, the only thing was, for a year or so, my band, Shadowmine, we used exclusively Line 6 pod FX boards going straight into the PA, both me and the other guitarist. Um, just this simple pod something, and uh, it's it sounds useless for recordings, but live it actually sounded pretty good. Can you play the bump beat? Nope. Never intend to. Sorry. How do you start off writing drums, or do you play them in your recordings? I, uh, if you check out my video, uh, I have this tutorial on how to program a simple drum beat. I, uh, I always start off just making four just um, I just uh, create this one piece of MIDI where I have four hits on the hi-hat and one kick uh, and one snare and just make this basic beat and then I build it from there. And the XFX2 piece is worth mentioning. I know it depends a lot on the guitar with pickups easy. Um, I use an XFX standard, the first one, so I wouldn't know about the XFX2 presets. I don't use any presets myself on the uh, standard, I just make my own. It's uh, Once you learn how to do it, it sounds better. Anyways. Last question, any tips on buying your first pedal? Um, uh, I would actually... If you don't have any pedals at all, I would definitely buy a delay pedal. Um, just get some, uh, like this Boss DD7, I don't know, I, I haven't had pedals for years, but a delay pedal can be massively useful and fun to play around with. Um, for live playing, I, when I started out playing live, I just had uh, my amp and a delay pedal, and that was all, all that I used. Just make sure you put the delay in the FX loop, not before the amp if you're running distortion, because then your delays will be distorted and it will sound like crap. I just got the XFX and it will take some time to learn and create a good preset. Yeah, it will. Just make sure you create a preset like every day. Um, try out new amps, try out new ways to do things, Google how to do it, check out the practical forums. Those people have a lot of knowledge about what they are doing. And uh, the XFX is just super incredible. Um, I'm not... Unless someone comes up with some PC software that beats the XFX standard soon, um, I'm not going to get rid of it. Um, got this... Um, what's it called? 
I forgot what it's called, but this new uh, VST amp simulator stuff uh, that everyone's so hyped about. And um, Stevie T made this video where he compared it to the XFX2. And I still haven't figured out if that video is ironic or not, because I think it sounds like absolute shit compared to the XFX2. Time to play. What? Positive grid, thank you. Uh, positive grid, sorry if I offend anyone, but I don't think positive grid sounds good at all. It really can't compare to. Uh, it really can't be compared to the XFX by far. What was your motivation on playing guitar? Um, I was actually forced to play guitar. Oops. I was forced to play guitar at school. At first, I hated it, but then I found out that it was kind of fun, and then I just continued playing and. Uh, my dad played guitar and he taught me some classical stuff and uh, uh, I've grown up in a family of musicians so uh, my motivation was just to make awesome music really. Would you ever move up to 8th string or even as insane 9th string? No way. Never. Ever. 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 I have a 7th string. What the hell? Uh, I have a 7 string, and um, that's the highest number of strings I'm ever going to go. I, I think a 7 string is nice because you can treat it like a standard guitar with just the ability to go kind of low, but going lower than B, in my opinion. Uh, drop A is the lowest practical tuning. Once you go lower than that, it just sounds like you're trying to make your guitar sound like a bass guitar, and I, I don't know. Um, People seem to forget that going lower on the tuner, tuning doesn't make your songs heavier at all. It just uh, makes your tuning lower and it gets muddy and you run into all sorts of problems producing good music with that kind of low tunings. I, I like to say that if you can't make good sounding music on the down tune 6 string then there's no reason to buy in 7 or 8 or even 9 string. That's just... Uh, that's just silly. <laughs> Give some riffs or something and stop dropping that thing. Just don't pick it up. Yeah, it, it was my pick. Um, yeah, really. Um, I would just like to thank everyone for uh, tuning in. Um, I'm definitely going to make uh, more uh, live uh, more live uh, shows later on, but I'm going away for three weeks now. So um, I'll see you guys in a while. Thanks again, everyone, and um, I'll see you all later. Bye.